people has been waiting to hear what I have to say about the Corey Bisbee case. People want my opinion on the Corey Bisbee case. They're stopping me in stores, casinos, traffic lights, and also in public. How do I feel about the Corey Bisbee case? Why haven't you really spoken on the Corey Bisbee case? I kind of agree with Chief Tabbitt for Norfolk, Virginia, former chief from Hampton, Virginia, that presided over the Corey Bisbee case during the time it happened. Today was my first day, this morning, 10, 20 minutes ago, was my first day looking at anything about the confession of Corey Bisbee as far as looking at the news links. What is my opinion? We already knew that he knew something happened to his child. We already knew, as I said many times, it's kind of unheard of a four-year-old child getting up three, four o'clock in the morning and walk, wandering off during a snowstorm. We already knew that. But there was no proof. There was no evidence. So to blame someone for something that you had no evidence on would have been unfair. So I kept my peace. But we all knew deep in our souls that he had something to do with the disappearance of his son. For a man to allow the community, the news stations, the courts, the police officers, the detectives, and most of all, his own family, to be drawn through his mess is sickening me that he could be so selfish. For him to cause so much pain within his own family outside the murder of his son shows us that he's a cowardless man and he's very selfish and only one he have ever thought about was himself. Somebody want to know how I feel about the Corey Bisbee case. As a news journalist, I supposed to stay neutral to the best of my ability. But my personal feelings towards Corey Bisbee and the actions that he have taken towards a child that could not defend himself shows me that he's a coward. A man that cannot be trusted. It has been totally embarrassing to the co to the whole community that he would do something so degrading. I would like to give kudos. I mean the biggest kudos to the Hampton Police Department and also the Hampton Prosecutor Antoine Bell for not Removing their knee off his neck. <clears throat> they said from the beginning, they knew he did send to his son. And they never let up. And they never wavered. We was wondering, where is the Amber alert? 
They knew. But they couldn't say. It was already too late. That an Amber Alert was not necessary. They said from the beginning that they had evidence within the home that Corey Bisbee was injured there. During the court case, Corey Bisbee alleged that the blood that was found in the home that matched baby Cody was from his nosebleed. But the Hampton Police Department said it was more blood found there than a nosebleed. Blood evidence there. <clears throat> they stripped that house down to its pipes. Dishwashers and drains. They knew something happened at that location. But they couldn't yet put all the pieces of the puzzle together. However, they didn't let up. Corey Bisbee, in my opinion, is the definition of evil. He's very calculating. And before he reported his son missing, his son was missing about seven months before he reported it. I dare you to be so mean. The real question is today, what really happened to baby Cody under the care of his father? What did baby Cody go through in his last days here? On earth. The pain. And the fear. That was in his eyes. As he watched his father. Steal his life. Had to be devastating. To a four year old. Was he crying? Did he scream for help? Yet his mother was nowhere near. To save him. How do a mother. Have four children. And. Is evidence, allegedly, she never checked on her kids. That your child was missing seven months before he was reported missing. Where were you? Where were you, woman to woman? And how could you stand by and allow everyone else to be the voice for your child? And you stay silent. What is you feeling right now? As you know, your son has been dead over 17, 19 months. What? How are you doing? How can a mother not love her kids? How can you go on with your life like your child never existed? What is it? Should be the question about baby Cody that the mother and the father did like. It's something about Cody. What was it that everyone seen so emotionally that's supposed to have been so attached? Two. Corey Bisbee, I dare you to sit in court as I watch your naughty head ass into the courtroom time after time, looking over your shoulder like a pitiful cat in the face, lying to the people, lying to me. Lying to the judge. Lying to your own lawyer. Amina Martina and also Mr. Brown. Lying to your aunt. Lying to your sister. Lying to your uncle. Lying to your cousin. How dare you? Lying to the police department. Lying to the detectives. 
I dare you to feel so comfortable within yourself that you thought you were smart enough to fool some people, but you wasn't smart enough to fool all people. Once again, I would like to personally give kudos to Hampton Police Department, Hampton Detectives, and also Chief Tavern. Yes, some things about this case was mishandled from the beginning. And I called them out. And that's my job. Because they say justice supposed to be blind. Innocent until proven guilty. Innocent until proven guilty. Corey Bisbee, you have now been proven guilty. At least enough for indictment. You will have your day in court. You will answer to the people about your actions that you chose to take when you decided to take the life of your son. There was people fighting for your rights, not that you murdered your child, but fighting that you had your voice heard. And your rights not violated. Now those same people. Going to fight. That you get life in penitentiary. Or death. I pray. That you suffer. That you suffer. Long term suffering. Within your mind, your body, and your soul. I pray that the spirit of Cody Bisbee eat your ass up from the inside out. I pray that what the Lord have for you, that no courts can do to you. I hope that you never rest in peace. I pray every time you close your eyes, you remember that day or that night when your son closed his. I pray that the actions that you decided to take around your other kids knowing that their sister and their brother was missing, that they don't remember whatever they could have seen. I pray that justice be done here on this earth while you living. I pray hell over your life. The Bible speak. Thou should not steal, kill, or destroy. You destroy so many people's lives. Not just your son, but your family. Your aunt, your uncle, your sister, your cousins. Up and down the highway. Up and down the highway. You freaking idiot. You embarrass your family. You shame them. They truly believe he's not dead. We'll never forget the cry out of your auntie voice. He's not dead. She truly believed. Cody was not dead. You shamed them. You embarrassed them. 
I hope they walk away from you. I hope they turn the other cheek. I see you in Wednesday. I see you Wednesday in court. And when I look at you, I know I'll be looking at a cold-blooded murderer. That's the difference when I enter the courtroom on Wednesday. The question would not be, is Corey Bisbee rights been violated? It'd be Corey Bisbee, a cold-blooded murderer in Hampton Roads. Live the us. I pray that Johnny, Tim, and Eric plunge your asshole. While you locked up. And I also pray that God will allow you to have enough character. To tell us where your child is. So that we can lay him to rest in peace. Everyone want to know how I feel. About Corey Bisbee. And baby Cody. That's how I feel. I feel he should burn in hell. Real like he did to his son. I'm rooting your life. Yeah, Stephen came in and y'all heard him at the time. Um, he's very distracting and all of that. He don't know what we're talking about. See, Stephen, he's the devil. God, the devil shows himself every time. Every time. Every time. What did I say? I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, you, everybody can hear you. Oh, Jesus. Shit. Fuck. Oh, oh, Jesus. You don't know what I'm talking about. No, I'm not even talking about you. You are. Because you rushing for some fucking food. No, I wasn't. Yes, you are. I'm not. I just went and ordered it. You got it for us. Okay, but you oh Jesus and all this. I'm doing an important interview. All you think about is your fat ass stomach, your bloated ass head, and your evil Knievel looking ass face. Evil Knievel? Yeah, evil Knievel looking ass face. Fuck you. What? I can't never finish a damn story when you around like I want to finish. Got to always end in some bullshit. Hungry ass. I wasn't hungry. I did get that look. I did get the card just in case though. Hold the card up again. You got what? I got the card just in case this time. General manager card, man. I show my son. I try to show you and get your ass. I got my son. Look what he got, y'all. Smoky bones. He got smoky bones already this afternoon. Ain't one o'clock. Smoky bones. Thank you, AJ Transportation, for bad rodeo on live lunch. Smoky bones. Thank you. The fucking smoky bones. He made me show my ugly ass self this morning. God damn. Came and wake up without being. I can't oh, wake up without I being. I don't know which one's which because I guess we can fix the room to say that. You got broccoli, don't you, Steve? You don't know you got broccoli and I got corn. The fuck you mean you don't know which one is which? They give me the wrong potato. You got cheese in your potato. You got the cheese in your potato. That's what's potato. Oh, Sam, they didn't fix our potatoes up. They don't fix them up. Is that broccoli what you got? Mm -hmm. All your stuff is in the belt. Thank you, AJ uh, Transportation, for these smoky bones. Sour cream. Hungry ass. Huh? Hungry ass. I'm not just hungry as hell. I'm not just going for the fucking meal. Just going for the fucking meal. God damn, he hungry as a bitch. AJ Transportation bought me this. He ain't bad Steven. Steven ain't bad his own. Yeah, I'm buying my own. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Hungry ass. Don't give me much, though. It's weird. Don't give me much of what, Steven? You got your bacon? Yeah, there's your bacon. There's your greens. 
There's your butter. You want the extra butter. He hungry as hell. Want the bread? He want my bread, y'all. This nigga hungry. Asking, begging for my food. He want my bread. I don't take the bread. Wait. Take the bread, Steven. I was trying to, but she took it away from me. <laughs> Goofy bastard. You know what I would say? Goofy bastard. You know what smoking bones should do? They should cut their open. They should cut open their potatoes and tear like let the people cut their own potatoes open. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep yeah. the heat in it. Because you're right. Because it's like, why do that? And especially yours with nothing on it. They put cheese on mine, so. Hungry as a bitch. I'll call Steven hungry as hell, y'all. Don't see here about to fuck this shit up. Hungry as hell. Slow down, man. You guess your fork is spinning all that? Slow down, man. I am mean, just. I, Slow down, man. I haven't even started eating yet. <laughs> I'm just trying to get my food. Right before it gets cold. That's gonna get cold, Steven. Yeah, like it's going somewhere. God damn. It's going somewhere. He's hungry as hell. Going down that fucking drain. All right, I gotta eat my lunch. For AJ Transportation. I just seen yesterday he sent me um money to get me some lunch. So okay. I bought it today. I sent you money for lunch yesterday, Steve, would you shut up? Do everybody a favor, shut the hell up. God damn. What's my sale? All right, guys, you can get all of this at um Smoky Bones, a loaded baked potato, a full rack of a full rack of ribs. All these ribs. Oh, damn, look all these ribs. All them ribs and two sides and a toast and a soda for $19.99. A full rack of ribs, a loaded baked potato, and toast for nineteen ninety nine. So, guys, all the damn ribs you get, all the goddamn ribs you get, all the ribs, nineteen ninety nine. Smoky bones. Order your rib feast right now. Get original barbecue. All right, we out. I gotta go. And you get a free drink.